Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. So today we're on the outskirts of uh, the pretty village of Langton Matravers in Dorset. It's about two miles west of Swanwich and five miles southeast of Corfe Castle on the Isle of Purbeck on the Jurassic Coast. And we're going to be doing a four mile circular walk from the south of the village. We'll be seeing some dinosaur footprints, <laughs> uh, two disused quarries, an old barn used by smugglers and some quite stunning coastal scenery. And we'll finish off with a, a little look round Langton Matravers itself. Now I'm filming at the end of August, it's a glorious sunny day, few clouds about, there is quite a wind but should be perfect conditions for walking so do come along with us. Now I've parked my car at a National Trust car park at Spyway. I think it's three pounds for six hours. Or well, initially we're going to start heading southwards. Now there is a handy little map in the car park. So this is where we're parked. So we're going to head up south and then we're going to head along here, Priest Way. Check out some dinosaur footprints there. And then just before this farm we're going to head south towards the coast to uh, Seacombe Cliff and then along to Dancing Ledge and then back via Spyway Barn and then we'll have a little bit of a, an exploration through Langton Matravers itself. Well, about uh, four or five hundred yards south from the car park, we come to a track called Priest Way, which indeed was an old track used by a priest uh, going from Swanwich uh, in the east to Worth Matravers in the west. And we're actually going to head west along this track because, uh, well, there's something rather interesting to see. Well, just as uh, wandering along Priest Way, some fantastic views looking north. There's uh, Swanwich in the far distance there, Ballard down along the top and then of course there's this ridge which uh, Logan and I walked along on our Corf Castle to Swanwich walk. If you haven't seen that video do check it out because we had some fun there. We, uh, we took the steam train back from uh, Swanwich to Corf Castle. Well I've been making my way along Priest Way and I think I mentioned right at the beginning of the walk, I promised I was going to show you some dinosaur tracks. Well, just come across the uh, sign and the gate to the tracks. Let's go and have a look. Well, here it is, folks. This is the location of some dinosaur footprints. I'm actually in a quarry called Keats Quarry. And the footprints were discovered in 1997 and the area was uh, open to the public in 2016. There is a little information board, I'll uh, put it up and you can read it by freezing the screen, but apparently the dinosaurs that were here could be up to 50 tonnes in weight and measure something like 25 metres long, nose to tail. And they reckon that the site here may have been a watering hole as uh, the prints left indicate a number of different individuals, including a juvenile. But, wow, isn't it amazing to think all those millions of years ago there would have been a dinosaur on this very spot. Well, Logan might not be interested in dinosaur footprints, but when it comes to uh, blackberries, well, now you're talking. <laughs> uh, I've got one for you as well. Good boy. Right, we need to come out of this quarry and start heading southwards. Wow, some of the uh, scenery 
I'm experiencing now is quite stunning. So this is a, we're going to head down this track towards Seacombe Quarry. I think I can see some stonework down there. I think that's an old sheet dip. And already the sea looking very blue. Quite a few waves out there because it is, I say, quite a windy day. But, oh, it really does take your breath away. Just uh, stop to look back up the valley where we've followed this track down. It really is quite beautiful. Of course, the only uh, negative about going downhill is it uh, probably means at some stage we've got an uphill bit, <laughs> but not for a while anyway. Well, we've made it to the coast and behind me here is Seacombe Quarry and we're now going to start heading eastwards towards Dancing Ledge and we're met up with an old friend of ours the Southwest Coast Path which is that long distance path of what 630 miles that goes from Poole in Dorset all the way around the coast Devon Cornwall uh, to Minehead we're not going to do all of that today but I say the scenery around here is quite stunning. I mean, it's such a beautiful sight seeing the waves crashing against uh, the rocks there. And I say just on the other side, uh, just see the top of uh, Seacombe Quarry. But we're not going to explore around there because uh, we've got another quarry to look at later on. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, this is as far east as I'm going to go on the walk. We've made our way to Dancing Ledge, an old quarry. Let's go down and have an exploration. And this is Dancing Ledge, one of my favourite uh, parts of the Jurassic Coast. It's a disused quarry, closed in the Victoria era, I think. And it's unusual in that it was only accessible from the sea. There are no roads here. And Purbeck stone was taken by cart to the edge of the ledge, which you can see down here. You can probably see some tracks just at the edge there. And cranes lifted the stone onto special flat bottom boats that in turn loaded onto ships further out. Apparently the tide is very conducive to loading here. Much of the stone was used to build Ramsgate Harbour. And the reason it's called Dancing Ledge is that uh, well, when the tide is at the right level, as the water cascades over the rock, it, it gives this sort of shimmering action that looks as though the waves are dancing on the ledge. Well, hopefully you can hear me above the, the noise of the waves and there's quite a a stiff wind as well but down there you can see some people swimming in a well it is a swimming pool it was uh, blasted out of the rock there in 1910 uh, for use by pupils at uh, the nearby Durnford school lovely cool dip today but I must say Logan and I aren't going to get down there because um, well you've got to be fairly supple to be able to get down there and 
get back up again. I love the sound of the waves crashing against the rocks. What a smashing place to be on a summer's day. And it really is an amazing place to come and explore. You can see there, there are some grills over some of the uh, caves and it's been bricked up. That's uh, well to allow bats in and out and to protect them. I think uh, there are mouse-eared bats and the greater horseshoe bats, apparently. Well, I could quite happily stay here at Dancing Ledge for hours and uh, just soak all the wonderful scenes in, but uh, we've got to head back now to Langton Travers, which means an uphill bit. But a lovely area to explore here, very popular with the holiday makers in the summer, and also rock climbers, as you can probably see just behind me. was hard we're nearly at the, the top you can probably just see behind me the uh, how steep it has been now I believe that this side of the ridge is called and I kid you not scratch arse bottom seriously <laughs> I'll let you look it up right onwards just a tiny bit more to do and then we're at the summit well our last look at the sea before we uh, head northwards back to uh, Langton Matravers and just in front of me on the other side of the wall you can see this uh, sculpture of a I think it's a limousine is that how you pronounce it cow done by a local artist Sarah Moore and I see there's a date of 2002 on it well not far to go till we're back at the car park and just passing a, a building here behind me called Spyway barn. It's a 19th century uh, barn, uh, grade 2 listed I believe, and it was bought by the, uh, the National Trust. And it's an old smuggling barn. And if you look inside they've got uh, various um, display boards telling you the sort of things that you can see in the area. For example, a puffin. Although we didn't actually see any puffins and then a little bit more about the history of uh, quarrying in the area and then on the other side a little bit about uh, conservation and some of the walks that you can do in the area. Well, we're now back at uh, Spyway Car Park, but before we end the video, uh, let's have a little look at Langton Matravers, a few things to uh, explore in there. And uh, firstly, actually, just by the car park, just over my shoulder is a building called Langton House. It was formerly a school built in 1927 called Spyway School. And I was reading that, uh, well, David Niven, the actor, may have spent some time there in the past. Anyway, since the 1990s, it's uh, been apartments and cottages. Well, just come into Langton Travers, and just before we have a look at the church, the building to the west of it, which I don't think we're going to be able to see, but we can see the, the gates to it in front of me here, is Durnford House, originally built in the 16th century and rebuilt in 1725. It became a school in 1894, and it was occupied by radar scientists in the Second World War when the pupils were transferred to a, another local school. Durnford House itself was completely demolished and rebuilt in uh, 1952. I'm guessing it's private today. 
Well, this lovely church here is uh, St George's Church. There were two or three previous buildings on the site, but in 1828 the existing church was taken down and rebuilt with a nave, chancel and south porch. Only the West Tower that dated from about 1390, although some sources say the uh, 15th century, uh, was retained. However, that building was considered unsafe in 1876 due to smuggling activity in the roof, so it was rebuilt again in Purbeck stone. Now, just in front of the church, you've got this statue. Uh, it's called Mason. It's a stone mason, and it represents the thousand plus years of quarrying in the area, and it was commissioned for the millennium. Let's have a little look inside. Very, very dark. I'm afraid. So there's the uh, the font. Lovely and cool in here. It's it's one of those churches that uh, when you get inside, it it looks bigger inside than it does outside. A little bit like the old <laughs> Tardis in uh, Doctor Who. That's a terrific uh, stained glass windows above the altar. They really are quite magnificent. And some terrific uh, wooden beams on the ceiling. And then just on the left hand side there's the uh, the organ. Pretty church. Well, just behind the church is uh, well, the Purbeck Stone Museum and Langton Matravers Museum, but uh, sadly it's closed. Uh, I think it's uh, only open on certain days of the year. And this is the parish badge uh, quartered by the Cross of St George, the uh, patron saint of the parish. And you've got there the uh, flame and torch of progress and learning, which represents the educational establishments and schools and clubs and societies of uh, the uh, the village and uh, what else a couple of the other quarters there representing the two ancient occupations here farming and the stone industry and this is our final destination the King's Arms pub opened in 1742 originally called the Mason's Arms and it changed its name in 1803 to the King's Arms I think it's the arms of George III on the sign there was another pub in the village, an 18th century pub called the Ship Inn further east, but uh, I think that closed not that long ago. Anyway, for research purposes, we're going to pop in to the pub garden behind the King's Arms pub. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here at Dancing Ledge with the sound of waves crashing against the rocks. We've had a super walk today. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. And if you enjoyed uh, the video, um, do check out our other videos in the series, uh, Walks in Dorset. Looks as though Logan's quite happy snoozing in the sun here. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. <laughs> Good boy. Thank you.